nga, meron siyang anas. Ayan. Okay? Meron siyang anas. Yung nagsasabi niya tungkol sa kaso ko, wait lang, okay? After this, isa-isa yung isa sila. Malakas ang kalaban, pero isa-isa lang. <laughs> okay, mga kababayan. I-share muna natin sa lahat po wait na lang, uh, natin. hindi pa nakarinig. So, nagsalita ang appointee ni Kuting ng Norte, appointee ni Lisa Smugs na si Enrile. Ayan. Magkakumaysa lang ko lang niya eh. Baka magkaproblema tayo. Eh, bago nga magtuloy-tuloy, tanungin natin, kumusta na ba yung... Uh... Never mind. Okay, I'll just... I'll just... Ex- <laughs> na-stress ako. I'll just... Ex- Adama kasi yung commercial, magkaka-ano tayo, copyright issues tayo. Diyos ko, dahi. Uh, anyway, <laughs> na-block na kayo. Bahala kayo dyan. Hindi pa yata ako na-block. Let me double check. Baka naman. Hindi, anyway, anyway, guys. Ito, ah. Ito, 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 ito. Pakicheck yung kanyang response. Kasi ang pansin ko sa kanya, ang dami mga side comments. Meron pa yung mga, bigla, ma- baka mapunta naman sa Chanel, mga ganyan ng topic. But ito, lastly, guys, ha. Ito na, lastly. Okay. Don't worry, ipopost ka. As usual, dahil alam ko, hindi nyo matiis na panorin lahat ng kagalingan ng mga taong ito. Minsan, kukunin ko lang yung highlights, no? Yun ang gagawin natin. Kukunin yung highlights natin and then mag-response tayo. Or, as you love it, kukunin natin highlights at mag-react tayo para magkaroon ng split screen effect. Yun favorite niyan. Alright? Ipopost natin yun para gets na gets niyan. Alright? Okay. Now, let's go to the last part. This part is very important, mga ka... ka Ka ano? Mga kahidarians. Ito na, ito na. So, as I said, if tinignan mo yung Uniteam crisis na yan, one of the biggest problems they have is that wala silang middleman. Wala silang tao, or middle woman for that matter. Kasi sabi ko nga, kung tinignan mo si Ma'am Arroyo, well, base sa intelligence na nakuha natin kay Mark Camboa, mukhang she already, uh, parang na-sense niya yung saan yung inip ng hangin, ba? So, mukhang she's not challenging na the leadership. Uh as much as some people would expect her. Pagdating naman kay Martin Romualdez, well, we know that where he stands. Because the reason I'm mentioning these people is because both Martin Romualdez and Arroyo, although in reality more Martin Romualdez actually, played a very, very crucial role dun sa pag-consolidate ng unit team. Because had Sara Duterte decided to run, baka BBM would not have uh, considered even running at all or pag paras silang tumakbo baka that would have opened the space for Lenny to win or some other third party so bringing those two groups together was a very important part and you needed to have an intermediary alright and actually basa sa, sa pagkaalam natin Martin Romualdez was the key, fa- uh, key factor there but to a certain degree Tita Arroyo was also involved in that uh, but not to the degree na kiniklaim ni super political analyst, expert, intelligence source na si Shian Gaza. Alright? Okay. In fairness, si Shian Gaza, tama siya dun sa mga ibang anash niya. Lalo na yung, yung bardagula na nangyari sa, sa poblasyon. Pero yung mga political anash niya, nako talagang sablay na sablay. Anyway, um, so that leaves who else? So, Aimee Marcos, being the sister of the president, and at the same time having, a, at least on the surface, a good relationship with the former president also, sees herself as a natural kind of a bridge between the current president and the former president, especially sa gitna ng ganitong bardagulan and political crisis na kita natin. So, not long after that whole weird... Uh, you know, rant, whatever, you know, incitement to rebellion, even some would say not only weird, but potentially criminal. Uh, and all of those, well, last time I checked, baseless accusations against the president. Uh, and uh, oh my goodness, all the other Hanash. I mean, Marcus came in and said, uh, no, 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 this is not the end of the story. Uh, nakausap ko naman yung mga tao, mga kaibigan natin dyan sa Davao. And in particular, the current mayor of Davao who happens to be of course Baste no so following you must sharp statements no at yung mga exchanges incendiary uh, rhetoric from president Duterte and also the exchanges and the response from from BBM etc sabi ni Amy Marcos this is her claim na nag-apologize daw yung mayor ng Davao sa kanila or i mean uh, nag nag-apologize dun sa kanyang call for um, sorry na distract ako kasi inisip ko parang yung bulljack TV kanina okay. wait lang okay 
Okay, back. We're back. We're back. Okay. Ito, ito. So, so, ang claim niya ni Marcos was, she kind of intervened to make sure na things do not get out of control because after all, kung mahal niya yung kapatid niya who happens to be president, at the same time, she's very good friend of the Duterte's, especially the former president. Now, one of the things na uh, at least nakakabahala doon sa ibang tao is that you cannot dismiss what happened in Davao as just a Duterte thing because even the son, even the mayor of Davao, even another governor, Alvarez, among others, uh, were more or less on the same note or, or were not necessarily disagreeing doon sa mga most incendiary comments by the president, right? Okay? So in light of that, ang claim was afterwards nagkaroon ng apology. So, ito yung kiniklaim ni... Sorry, I'm just trying to find kung tama itong quote. Okay, so, i-screenshot ko para kayo mismong... Oh, ito yung quote of Amy Marcos. No, this is important because, as I said, di ba? Knowing how conflict avoidant BBM is, and, or rather, how he wants it calibrated and strategic, you would think that Aimee's intervention is not totally unreasonable and that, in a way, baka meron pang blessing from BBM or at least BBM would welcome it. So, ito yung sinabi. Sabi ko, oh, yan, yan. Bakit pinagsasabi mo yan? Tapos sabi niya, sorry, sorry, ganun. Nakakatuwa nga eh. Pero naintindihan ko kasi, syempre, yung nagbababag, ano, nagbab, na, nagbababagbag talaga yung damdamin ng bagets eh. Syempre, yung tatay niya at saka yung ate niya. Or referring dun sa, I think, potentially ICC case, no? So, sabi niya, hey, what's that? Why are you saying that? Sabi niya daw sa kanya, sorry, sorry, it's like that, it's funny, but I understand because he's really bothered, including his father and sister. So, in short, parang she was trying to frame this as, uh, or at least yung narrative dito, or yung, yung characterization dito is, uh, naging emotional lang tao. Um, si Sarah naman talked about brotherly love, her love for her family. So, in a way, she tried to play it down. So, for a few days... Yun yung naging operating assumption na baka things just got a little bit out of control and a little bit emotional. And then suddenly, you have this response from the mayor of Davao. I don't know the circumstance of that. Maybe our Davao friends can tell me about it. Uh, ah, ito pa. It's sabi niya, lumapit pa sa akin. I see Mayor Basta Duterte. Nags- na, ito, ito, ito. Ah. Para mabasa niyo on your own, okay? Kasi... Oh, alam mo naman, hindi naman tayo katulad ng mga nagbubuljakan lang. Talagang everything we do, base yan sa evidentiary documentation. Alright, ito, ito. Okay. So, ito yung kiniklaim mo. So, lumapit sa akin ay si Mayor Basta Duterte. Nagsusorry, nagsus- sorry. Naintindan ko naman kasi. Siyempre, sobrang emotional siya. Dalisipin mo naman. Ikukulong yung tatay mo at yung ate mo. Talaga naman, magre-revolution ang yung damdamin. O, oh, something like that. Alright? So, so in English, Mayor Basta Duterte approached me and said sorry several times. I understand because it was just very emotional. Because if you think about it, your father and your sister will be in prison. Your emotions will indeed revolt. Okay, I'm not sure about the translation, but whatever. But more or less, it got the... the <laughs> The, 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 it captured the spirit of the, ano, of the statement. But lo and behold, over the weekend, dahil, well, I think this happened on Sunday. Sa Sabat day yan, sabi ko, di ako mag-comment. May mga, may mga media na gusto mag-interview sa atin, sabi ko, no, thanks. Sunday yan, di ako magpapainterview, especially political issue pa, just ko. Okay, not good for my soul. Okay, ito, nag-Facebook post ito si, si Mayor Basta sabi niya, Madam Aimee, linawin ko lang kasi ginagamit mo na sa drama mo dyan sa media. Humihinga ako ng tawa dahil naawa ako sa'yo, hindi dahil sa mga sinisabi ko tungkol sa kapatid mo na presidente. And then, I think that part is Bisaya. Please just translate for me. Ayan, so, Madam Aimee, I just want to clarify because you're already using me in your drama in the media. I apologize because I've... Ayan naman tayo ah. Yung ma- no translations. Okay, anyway. Apologies because I felt sorry for you, not because of what I said about your brother, the president. Stop using me with your fake empathy. I had, uh, so that's the Bisaya part. Undang. Okay. Yung mga, oh, ayoko na sabihin, baka magkamali tayo sa Bisaya pronunciation natin. So that, okay, yung part na yun, important yung translation sa akin. Stop using me with your fake empath- empathy. I had already forgotten your actions once, but you continue to be a nuisance. Ah, okay. So that's, that's what that, 
part means. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, at least ito. Okay, okay. Oh, it, clarify ko ulit dun sa mga bisaya na itong kaibigan ko. Tama yung translation na yan. But okay. So, this is pretty big. This is essentially shutting down any effort or public posturing by some people as a, somehow uh, kind of an intermediary. So, with, with that said, ang tanong ko ngayon is, ano nang mangyari ngayon? Di ba? Kasi, pati si Amy Marcos, ginanon, di ba? So, medyo magulo. Uh, gist of the story, right? Yeah, it's no, indeed gist of the story kasi this is translation. So, it, it captured the spirit of the, the paragraph or whatever. Okay, anyway. Uh, rough translation na lang sabihin natin just to put it nice. Um, but at least the Bisaya part, uh, hindi, hindi ako marunong Bisaya. So, at least now, nag-gets ko ang ibig sabihin ng part na yan. Okay. Tsaka kung tama naman si Mark, eh, si Baste, he has yung, yung style ng tatay niya. Eh. Yung very visceral, emotional, uh, strong yung kanyang messaging and all of that. So so to do that to uh, to Aimee Marcos, wow, that's quite something. So I'm wondering anong response ni Aimee Marcos or magre-respond siya at all. And I'm also wondering what's going to be the long-term implications of that. Kasi that essentially just leaves Sara Duterte as the only one who can breach between the two sides. So we're going to talk about that more uh, in the... Um, we're going to talk more about that in the coming uh, days. Kasama po natin si... Uh, si Ronald Diamas among others but for tomorrow guys we're gonna have a little bit of a detour pag-usapan natin ulit balikan natin itong issue na to uy JK umayos ka wag kang epal dyan um umayos kayo dyan <laughs> mamaya i-block natin ha i-block kita ayan ayan alright okay And that's how guys I enjoy doing that okay anyway um isa ka pa ma-block ka na umayos ka <laughs> Now, guys, balikan natin itong issue na to. Mm. T- tomorrow, we're gonna have a detour kasi pag-usapan natin. Remember, I talked about the pink wave and I also talked about the... I'm talking about not pink wave in the Philippines. I'm talking about the pink, pink wave in Latin America. Yung, yung uh, nanalo yung mga progressives sa Chile. Yung current president of Chile, Boric, is my age. Last time I checked, me 30s lang. Uh, uh, yung pagbalik ni Lula da Silva, both of them were able to defeat Trumpian figure. Uh, especially in the case of Brazil, of course, you're familiar with the person I'm talking about, uh, Jair Bolsonaro. No? Horrible, tropical Trump ang tawag sa kanya. So, let's try to understand how did they manage to do it in Latin America? Because Latin America is very, very important for us. Yung kasaysayan natin, yung connections natin, and more importantly, yung circumstances natin. Kasi kung tinignan nyo, kung tinignan nyo, guys, kung tinignan nyo, yung circumstances sa mga bansang yan, yung inequalities, corrupt politicians, disaffection with state institutions, broken public uh, transportation, uh, high levels of poverty and hunger, high concentration of wealth among few people, the whole Codillo, Hatiendero, political dynasty problems, mas similar tayo sa Latin American countries kaysa yung mga ibang asyano na bansa. Ang layo natin sa Japan, Korea, yung mga ganyan. Malayo rin tayo sa mga maraming, uh, maraming kasama natin sa Southeast Asia. So to be honest, I think we are more and more similar with Latin American countries. So tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, Philippine, Latin America with someone from the region from Latin America, uh, someone who was an ambassador to the United Nations, someone who knows Latin American affairs very well, and someone who also cares uh, and loves the Philippines. So there's a lot that we can catch up on. Okay, let me also block this. Okay. And one bad comment, you guys are going to be blocked here, okay? Wala tayong time dito for basura, okay? I want to keep my comment sections as clean and good as possible. So, don't test me, okay? One bad comment, you're done. Because hindi namin kailangan, okay? Alright, okay. Anyway, <laughs> wala na. Block na yan. Relax ka lang. <laughs> si Axel. Alright, so please uh, watch, uh, stay tuned dun sa interview natin tomorrow. And then we'll also try to catch up with our very good friend uh, and, uh, of course, co-host. R&R, Ronald Diamas, and then hopefully also soon catch up in Thai with uh, Lele Claudio and other experts for more big picture analysis. On that note, thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Pasensya dun sa mga technical issues, sa mga delays, etc. Ganun talaga. Pag nakabalik ka sa third world, biglang gumana ito, hindi gumana ito. Wala naman production. So again, thank you very much from the country's number one po- political podcast with the caveat that, well, sometimes kahit hindi mag number one, at least number one na hindi produced. <laughs> <laughs> no political podcast, all right? Thank you very much. God bless and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you again for your kind support. And I'll link it, please. Okay, magana tayo. Vlogger style. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Richard Hidarian Vlogs. 
Subscribe also to TikTok, Richard Heydarian 007, and subscribe to Facebook, Libre Lang Poyan, Richard Foron Heydarian. On that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon.